the African savanna. A wilderness of extreme beauty. But for the animals that call this home, it's a daily battle to stay alive. The hunters are expert killers. But the hunted are masters of defense. They have an armory of strategies. Super senses, camouflage, and physical abilities that help them keep one step ahead. So when the hunt is on, the outcome is never a sure bet. On the southeastern side of Zambia lies the vast Luangwa River Valley. Over 400 kilometers long, and in some places, nearly 200 kilometers wide. It's a wildlife haven, filled with a mosaic of habitats, providing homes and opportunities for thousands of different animals. It's October, and the height of the dry season. There's been no rain here for five months. The Luangwa River is the only reliable source of water for many kilometers, attracting animals from across the valley to its banks. A bend in the river is an oasis for a herd of puku antelope. Here they find pools of drinking water, woodlands for shade, and the valley's last blades of fresh grass that sprout in what's left of the groundwater. This place is perfect for the puku, and the newest member of the herd. This puku calf is only a few weeks old. Tiny and still unsure on his legs, he is one of the most vulnerable animals in the valley. Unfortunately, nearly half of all puku calves never make it beyond five months old. He's an easy target for any predator. But his mother has a strategy to help him survive. After a wash and brush up, she leaves him to hunker down in the rutted mud. Hiding like this gives him his best chance to stay safe. Now that he is carefully concealed, his mother can join the herd. The adult puku is safer in a group, protected by lots of ears and eyes. This is a dangerous neighborhood. The puku have spotted something lurking in the undergrowth. A leopard. They not only hunt puku, they also take baboons and guinea fowl if they get the chance. The puku move closer to try and identify the foe. They're dangerously close to the strike zone now.
10 meters is all the cat needs to pounce. It tenses for the final sprint. But the keen-eyed guinea fowl spot the leopard first and shriek the alarm. The leopard's color is blown. He's lost the element of surprise. The baby Puku has a lot to learn about his home. And the next two days will turn out to be full of life lessons. Lesson number one, stay close to family and natural allies. The baboon troop and guinea fowl flock have chosen the bend in the river for the same reason as the puku. Water, shelter and food. But there's an added benefit to sharing this prime real estate. Protection. Each group looks out for its own tribe. But by hanging out together, they become a network of eyes and ears. Great for thwarting a solitary hunter. Not so effective when a lethal army turns up at the river bend. Wild dogs. Almost 85% of their hunts end in a kill. Five times more successful than lions. Cats stalk before releasing a burst of speed, but these dogs use stamina, running their prey into the ground. Today, they're after Puku. The herd must pull out every survival strategy they have. They're safer on the plane, a clear line of sight, and space to make a quick getaway. Then the Puku do something surprising. They start to whistle. Life lesson number two, whistles mean danger. Carrying over a kilometer, they're a split second way of sounding the alarm. The dogs are fast and organized. They hunt as a tight, coordinated team. But Puku have talents of their own. Long, athletic limbs keep them one step ahead of their pursuers. A kind of bouncing run, called stotting, makes it hard for the dogs to predict the Puku's next move. The combination of a vigilant herd and the Puku's physical skills help them outmaneuver the dogs, neutralizing their stamina advantage, forcing a fail for the pack. The wild dogs won't waste any more energy here. They leave to find less agile prey. Nature hasn't blessed the ground-dwelling guinea fowl with the stotting skills of the puku. They can still move pretty fast, though. They're strong runners, with a top speed of around 30 kilometers per hour. But they're not likely to out-sprint an enemy. Still, what they lack in physical gifts, they more than make up in sheer chutzpah. This little gang is the boldest and noisiest of the Riverside residents. A complex communication system helps them stay out of trouble. Each call is different and has a specific purpose. This is the call of the female. And this, the male. This one means Here's a tasty snack. And this means all is safe. 
And when they all decide to chip in, it's a wonder that they still understand each other. But this call is unmistakable. It means danger. The alarm call can carry nearly half a kilometre. Putting the neighbourhood on full alert. Inside the guinea fowl flock, the local baboon troop forages for fresh grass and digs for roots on the plain. There's a strict hierarchy within this group. Each individual has a place and role. They know their jobs. The safety of the entire troop is in the hands of the lower ranks. Both males and females defend the perimeter using vantage points to help spot danger. The leopard still hasn't eaten since missing out on his morning meal. He's getting hungry now, so we'll seize any opportunity. He'll take an unwary baboon, given the chance. Troubles brewing within the baboon ranks. There's a new leader. This is the alpha male in the troop. He's the boss and he's determined to assert his authority. He's had to fight his way up through the ranks. A combination of threats and genuine violence is needed to make sure the troop knows who's in charge. But his antics are a dangerous distraction. The sentries are not doing their job. And the leopard has spotted his chance. The noise of the fight covers the leopard's stalk. But before he can make his attack, one of the baboon sentries finally spots him. Somehow, over the noise, the troop hears the warning. The threat forces the troop to put aside their differences and unite as a team. Leopard versus baboon is not the foregone conclusion it might seem. Baboons are strong, aggressive, and armed with four centimeter canines. These 20 kilo primates are intimidating. In more than a third of all recorded fights between baboon and leopard, the leopard is killed. Despite his hunger, a grudging retreat is the leopard's best option. But unless the baboons can truly unite their troop, someone in their midst is living on borrowed time. In the daytime, it's the prey animals that have the advantage. Many eyes have kept the puku safe. 
and help the guinea fowl flock and baboon troop outsmart the leopard. But as the sun sets over the bend in the river, the odds begin to shift. Excellent night vision gives hunters an advantage over the hunted, whose eyesight is not much better than ours in the dark. It's time to deploy a new set of survival strategies. The baboons utilize their incredible climbing skills and seek shelter in the tall trees on the edge of the plains. The guinea fowl do the same. Getting up a 30-meter tree might seem like a tall order for a ground-dwelling bird, but their tiny legs are powerful and give enough vertical lift to help their small wings carry them to the very top. They weigh just under a kilo, so can perch on the thin outer branches, beyond the reach of a heavy adult leopard. Or at least that's the strategy. A military grade night vision camera cuts through the darkness. The guinea fowl feel safe in their lofty perch and have finally stopped chattering. Any babble now would attract unwanted attention. At night, silence means survival. But the leopard knows exactly where they are. His hearing is three times better than ours, so even the careless rustling of feathers gives them away. The night vision camera creates images from heat radiation, so the leopard's iconic spots are invisible to us. If he wants guinea fowl for dinner, he's going to have to climb. Short, strong legs and a long, muscular body propel him three meters up the tree. The guinea fowl freeze, hoping the cat can't see them. Out on a limb, the leopard's weight is a disadvantage. Stealth and timing are vital. Foiled by flight. The leopard has used precious energy hunting the guinea fowl and now he needs to make a kill. Unlike the creatures in the trees, the puku must take their chances on the ground. They stick with daytime survival strategies and choose the open plain. There's safety in numbers. They can't see as well at night, but the extra pairs of eyes and ears give them a better chance of survival. The mother of Puku shelters with the rest of the group. But her baby is nowhere to be seen. Even more surprising, she doesn't seem worried about it. The calf has moved off far from the herd. It hunkers down alone in the pitch dark. It's completely exposed. Now, with the field in pitch darkness, the leopard returns to make full use of his superior eyesight. Seven times more acute than a human's. The puku can't see him, but have an excellent sense of smell. They know something's out there.
If the leopard stays upwind, he stands a chance. can afford to bide his time, waiting for just the right moment. The target is a lone adult that strayed dangerously far from the group. The puku has no idea how close to death it's wandered. But in the Luangwa Valley, it's unwise to count one's chickens before they hatch. Because no matter how tough you are, there's always someone tougher. In this case, a pride of lions. The lions can also see in the dark, and they won't want to share anything they catch. Outnumbered and outgunned, the leopard has to move on. This is not his night. The lions are hoping to take an adult puku. But to get to the herd, they'll be walking very close to the calf. But unbelievably, this lioness walks right past him. Nature has provided newborn puku with remarkable defenses against predators. For the first few months of his life, he has no scent whatsoever. So the lions can't locate him by smell. It's like his own invisibility cloak. Thanks to this adaptation, he's actually safer out here on his own than with the herd. He survives by hiding in plain sight. But the herd doesn't have these defenses. And now the lions are zeroing in on them. These big cats rely on strength in numbers and close coordination in their attack. The puku deploy their stotting tactic, which makes it harder for the pride to anticipate their moves. The lions push most of the herd to the other side of the plain, away from the river, and isolate a female who makes a run for it in the opposite direction. The downed female could easily be the baby's mother. If so, the youngster has no chance of survival. He's still totally reliant on his mother for nourishment and protection. And now, the herd is completely out of sight. Dawn breaks over the plain. After escaping the leopard last night, the guinea fowl enjoy the first drink of the morning. The baby puku is still all alone. Hunger has driven him to break cover to look for his mother. He's now very visible. With predators nearby, this is extremely risky. He doesn't know it yet, but his mother has survived the lion attack. She's also searching high and low.
finally, he spots her. He's lucky. The family is reunited. Moving from his hiding place could have been a fatal error. A mistake he can't afford to make again. They're together again. But the Puku family now faces another problem. It's getting hotter. And by suckling her calf, the mother Puku is in danger of dehydration. She must drink soon. But there's a very dangerous obstacle blocking her path. The lions are between her and the river. The predators prefer to hunt at night, but rarely ignore an opportunity. She must choose her moment wisely. As the lions start to drift off, desperate thirst drives the mother puku to throw caution to the winds. She has to make her move. The baby knows the drill. Time to hide. The mother's every sense is on high alert. Her eyes have horizontal pupils that expand her field of view and limit dazzling light from the sun above. Her ears can pivot 180 degrees, picking up the slightest sound, ahead and behind and her nostrils suck in scent on the wind. If the lions make a move, she'll know about it. Running now would trigger an attack response. Sometimes, stealth is more effective than speed. Step by cautious step, she walks quietly, deliberately, towards the riverbank. And the rest of the puku herd. The baboons and guinea fowl are here too. Guarded by an army of eyes and ears, she can drink in peace. Meanwhile, as the temperature rises, the bold guinea fowl flock gets on with the business of finding food. At this time of year, insects and bugs are scarce. So the guinea fowl must work harder and search longer to find enough food. This forces the flock to venture away from the shelter of the scrub and out into the open. This is not a comfortable place for a slow flying bird. But guinea fowl have a time-honored strategy for staying safe here. They join up with all the birds in the area to form a mega flock. There can be over a hundred individuals in these gatherings. It means that someone always has their head up watching the flock's back. 
eyes on either side of their heads give them a massive 300 degree field of view. And when you have 200 eyes looking out for danger, even lions aren't a threat. Unfortunately, enemies can still swoop down from above. A martial eagle. Measuring around a meter tall with a two meter wingspan, it has the size and power to snatch a baby baboon or puku. Or even an adult guinea fowl. Today, the eagle hasn't landed because of them. It wanted this monitor lizard. But in the Luangwa Valley, at the peak of the dry season, every species becomes opportunistic. While all eyes were on the eagle, a baboon took advantage of the chaos and betrayed the Alliance. Around here, it's wise to keep an eye on both your enemies and your friends. In the dry season, finding food takes up most of the baboon troops' daylight hours. They can eat almost anything. Handy when there's so little food available during these tough, lean months. Seeds, roots, and even unappetizing dry gourds are all on the menu. The alpha male and his females have found something far more valuable. A nest of ants. Miniature packets of precious protein. But ants are tiny, and finding enough for a meal requires total concentration. Keeping the alpha male distracted. While he's looking the other way, a younger male sneakily mates with one of his females. The act is a direct challenge to the alpha male's authority. And he's just realized what's going on. The other low-ranking males huddle together, knowing trouble's brewing. There's confusion in the troop. The alpha male must assert his authority. But the lower ranks put on a united front. The fight can be heard across the neighborhood.
the baboons are attracting attention. And not in a good way. In the confusion, the hungry leopard has seized the opportunity to take down one of the baboons. He finally gets a meal. The alpha male has survived, but he's injured. Infighting has led to the death of a troop member. He's still in charge, but he has to impose control soon, or the troop will remain vulnerable to attack. By midday, the temperature is a scorching 40 degrees Celsius. The hunters crash in the heat and a temporary truce falls across the neighborhood. For the Puku, it's time to rest. The baboons nod off in the heat. and the guinea fowl head for the shade. Their beautiful spotted feathers help conceal them in the dappled light, which gives them a chance to take a nap. But their rest is brief. As the afternoon rolls on, the temperature drops. And for the youngsters, it's a chance to play. This is fun, but fun with a purpose. They practice their stotting skills. Even these rookies are able to leap a meter off the ground. The gallop, twists and turns are all part of their escape maneuvers and hone agility. The chase builds stamina and speed. All essential skills for life as a puku in the Luangwa Valley. Evening arrives quickly here. There's just time for the baboons to have a last forage before heading to the safety of the trees. The youngsters have spotted something more interesting. A slender mongoose. It's caught a cobra. It's inadvertently doing the baboons a favor. An accidental bite from the snake would kill any one of the troop. Especially the young and overly inquisitive. As the moon rises in the sky, the mood darkens in the valley below. The hunters are on the move. 
Fear drives the vulnerable to seek safety. The Puku mother and her calf move onto the open plain, away from the thick scrub. The female baboons lead the troop to a small clump of trees. This will be their sanctuary for the night. After the fallout from the fight, the injured alpha male chooses to sleep away from the rest of the troop. He finds a branch on the edge of the canopy and settles down to sleep. Below, the guinea fowl make a dash for the woodlands that fringe the bend in the river. The night shift starts. The baboons seem safe in their roost tree. It's 30 meters high with a straight nine meter lower trunk. Surely nothing can climb this vertical barrier. But they haven't counted on the strength and determination of a young, hungry cat. Sharp, five centimeter hooked claws make it look easy. The breach of the baboon's treetop fortress causes blind panic. The alpha male is separated from the rest of the troop. There's no neighboring tree to escape to. The leopard moves in. The baboon is cornered. A bite to the neck kills the alpha male instantly. The line between life and death in the Luangwa Valley is hair thin. The alpha male has paid the ultimate price for failing to unite the troop under his command. Whoever steps up to take over the role of the new alpha will need to learn from his mistakes. As the sun rises over the Luangwa Valley, clouds in the morning sky herald a shift in the weather. The dry season is finally coming to an end. It's a new day, a new season, and a new start for the baboon troop. One of the young males woos a female with some grooming. This is now his troop. And he's already ensuring it's a united team. In six months' time, the next generation will be born securing the troop's future. The Puku mother and baby have also survived another night. The last two days have been tough, but the calf has learned some vital survival skills. He's on track to make it through those critical first five months and grow into a powerful young buck. When the rains finally arrive, the Puku will move away from the bend in the river onto lush new pastures. But the guinea fowl flock are going nowhere. This corner of Zambia might be a dangerous place to live. 
But these birds are bold, clever, and good at keeping out of trouble. And what would the neighbors do without the valley's noisiest guardian angels?